Good afternoon. Thank you to the Healthcare Improvement Foundation for inviting us to talk about our project, a multifaceted and interdisciplinary approach to reducing cesarean section incision infections. My name is Annalise Galtieri, and I'm the patient safety and quality nurse for the OB department at Einstein. And my name is Kathy Micklow. I'm an infection preventionist here at Albert Einstein Medical Center in Philadelphia. So we'd like to get into some of the general background where C-sections are one of the most commonly performed surgeries performed in the United States. And unfortunately, surgical site infections have become very common complications following C-sections. Uh, this gives a lot of physical pain and emotional burdens on the mother, and it has resulted in longer hospital stays and has a mortality rate of 3%. Some of the precipitating events that inspired us was that we were noticing a, a sustained increase in cesarean section in, incision infections from August 27th through January 2018. So this prompted a multidisciplinary and a multifaceted approach to combat and decrease complication and sequelae. So before, when we first started and in, infection prevention brought this to our attention, uh, because they track our data and, and let us know if, if they note any trends, we set two goals for ourselves. The first was to reduce the incidence of cesarean section incision infections in our organization. And the second was to implement evidence-based best practices prior to, during, and after surgery. So we accomplished this in a variety of ways. The first thing we did is we realized that obstetrics is, is not alone in doing a cesarean. So we gathered a multidisciplinary group. We included environmental services, anesthesiology, pediatrics, infection prevention, nursing, OB, anybody that we could think of that could help us identify where were, where were our processes falling apart? Where were the gaps in our practice? We did a multidisciplinary literature review to make sure that from each each of the literatures that we were pulling the very best practices for, for our moms. And then we utilized two very important things. One is a patient tracking technique where literally we followed a patient step by step by step from a mission through outpatient to say what happens at each one of these steps for a cesarean. And the other was direct observation where we just had people come in and observe. We would stand in the operating room and just watch and see what were people doing what weren't they doing? What were they doing? Um, we incorporated the five whys to make sure that we were getting to the root of problems and challenging long-held practices to say, why, why are we doing it that way? We also did an assessment of education and found that for our staff, there were gaps in their knowledge or areas where they weren't as strong in knowing what they were supposed to do. And we also identified a gap for patient information that when we were letting patients go and discharging them, we were basically saying, you know, keep your incision clean and dry, call your provider. But what does that look like? So we did an educational assessment also. Following are the interventions that we did for our implementation and plan. So we actually identified 38 different interventions that were implemented from January through June of 2018 kept the spreadsheet and evaluated all the uh, numbers that were attributed to that. Uh, some examples would be chlorhex steam wipes were being given to patients upon admission. And then we felt that the population was pro possibly not using them correctly. So we it, it gave this job to the nursing staff. It also was determined that not every patient goes to into labor and delivery the same day. So if it's longer than 24 hours, the chlorhexidine wipes will be performed by the nurse every 24 hours. Um, we also had opportunities to improve storage of supplies and uh, when we looked at the physical structure of the labor and delivery suite to ensure proper infection control practices. Um, the OR is empowered to uh, uh, to act as a labor and delivery OR. Uh, this labor and delivery culture was uh, different than what they currently use in the OR, so we standardized it to match the OR standards. Um, 
and we gave the patient comprehensive discharge information to take home with them. Such as incision check appointments were one, done one week post discharge rather than waiting for the four weeks. And then we looked at the wound back application for patients who had high risk factors, such as a BMI greater than 40, hypertension and diabetes. Uh, the wound back program was based on uh, the PDSA uh, Perform Do Study Act uh, venue. And um, we realized that there were, was no evidence to, in the literature, to really continue on with this. And so we uh, scrapped that piece of the, uh, <laughs> uh, scrapped this piece of the uh, pro process. What we found was this, uh, many of our interventions, we knew that we were going to keep them, you know, right. putting into place a competency for the OR technician every year, that that was going to, to be done and we were not going to change that. But there were some interventions, such as the wound back, where we did do a PDSA cycle to say, okay, is this helping? Is this not helping? And what we found after several months of use, and this is an expensive intervention, we paused for a month to see was there any change, and there wasn't. That month, we actually didn't even have any C-section incision infections. So then we stopped using that. So we did, we did um, evaluate our interventions as we went along. So our data, our baseline data is from a fiscal year uh, 2018. Our year goes from July to June. And you can see that starting in August of 17 through January, all of a sudden we were having these spikes. Um, our average incidence of our C-section uh, incision infections was 1.5% over this year. The orange line is the total number of C-sections. The blue line is our incidence. From February to June on this graph is when we were actually meeting, selecting our interventions, putting our interventions into place. And you can see we had really high incidence even during that time that we were implementing. Fiscal year 19, the, next, the following year, um, our average incidence was 1.2%. So that was a decrease of 0.3%. And that even includes an uptick in December um, that we identified where we identified two patients that really were outliers and had extreme extenuating circumstances, um, which, which was problematic. So we were very pleased to see that we were able to then keep, keep this number lower than it had been the year before. When you look at incidents, sometimes it's hard to see, like, what does that mean in terms of numbers of real people? So our actual cases may not look very high. We do about 900 cesareans per year. And in 2017, it was 14. Fiscal 2018, it was 12. And fiscal 2019, we came down to 10. Though that decrease in numbers, our goal is to hit zero. Because if one patient, if you're that one patient that has the, the surgical site infection from your cesarean, this is potentially life altering and, and certainly life disrupting. So we were happy to see that we've been able to pull those numbers down little by little, year by year. So with the innovations, we chose to use a multidisciplinary and a multifaceted approach that's based on the comprehensive unit-based safety project developed at Hopkins, also known as CUSP, C-U-S-P, where every voice has equal value and we are looking to see that how could any patient be harmed and how, how and what can we do to make sure that they are not harmed. So we built committees and work groups with common goals and zero is our goal. So ju just to let you know, a lot of our patients have comorbidities that make them much more at risk to get an infection, such as obesity, hypertension, diabetes. And what we felt was, yes, people may still get infections. Our goal is zero, because if somebody gets an infection, we want it to be in spite of what we're doing, not because we weren't doing something okay. good enough. So that's, that's really been our goal. So our conclusions, our best methodology was um, going to the GEMBA. That's a lean methodology that means 
You go to where the process is actually happening. And I cannot stress enough how important it was to not only look at each step of the process and question every step of the process and what we did, but having an outside set of eyes when we involved our main OR uh, nurse educator and the nurse manager, they came and looked and they could see things that we didn't see. When you're used to doing something for such a long time, sometimes you don't see the opportunities. And they came and said, why are you doing it this way? Why is this setting here? And that was so, so, so valuable. Obviously, a project of this immense, <laughs> immense scope does not happen without strong physician and nursing leadership. And I can't say enough about the chair of OB who, who really was the driver behind this. And we found that by standardizing our processes, it has led to a sustainable decrease in our surgical site infection um, rate. So here are a couple references. And then we would just like to thank the people that really were helpful. Dr. Jaspin, our chair of OB, Glenn Shopper, our chair of OB anesthesia, and many others um, who really were so helpful in this project. And in closing, we just want to say thank you for allowing us to talk about our project. Thank you very much.